-hmm. Thank you so much, Andre. And hi, uh, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, well, the second call in, in uh, for two for 2023. And this time we have our first actually invited speaker for in the series of Argos Community Calls, uh, who will be talking about uh, Argos integration in a, a platform that supports research objects. Uh, his name is Raul Palma, and uh, he's head of data analytics and semantics uh, development at PSNC, which is the Poznan Supercomputing and Networking uh, Center in Poland. And uh, Raul, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we look forward to uh, hearing more about uh, what you did uh, and how you use Argos. Yes, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Eli. Uh, uh, so hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here as well, join you in this uh, community call. Um, so one of them, um, just to, to, to comment that the work that um, I am going to show you here is um, Part of the activities that we are doing currently at, as part of the Reliance project, which is one of the InfraEOS 07 projects, you know, so is the, the set of projects that is enhancing and extending in the EOS exchange. And one of the activities in this project um, uh, related to the management of the research lifecycle is uh, also connection with, uh, with the Argos data management platform. Uh, so I will start a bit with the motivation of, of this integration. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know very well the, the research data life cycle. Uh, so I, basically, as a continuous and dynamic process that involves uh, different stages, since like the initiation of a research project through the development of the project and then after the finalization of this project. So obviously there are many stages as you see in, the, in this uh, diagram, you are very sure that you are very familiar with this, of course, uh, that includes since the you know planning, collection, the processing, analysis of the data, preservation of the data, sharing of the data, and then the reuse. Uh, so what was the idea for us, uh, uh, you know, to connect this with our work? So, you know, the main challenge here is to support this life cycle from the perspective of various related stakeholders in this. Uh, so basically like researchers and data providers, but any other uh, type of stakeholder that is connected to, to, to this uh, integration uh, or, or management of the data, um, which do not only, of course, definition of how the data is handled uh, during and after the project, but also there are the ones responsible or uh, in charge of this, um, uh, the production generation, collection of the data, this processing and analysis and the preservation of the data uh, and making sure that the data is discoverable uh, so that it can be reused later on uh, if it's possible. So our goals were basically to support the creation and maintenance of ma machine actionable DMPs that uh, can also support uh, these stakeholders to actively and dynamically manage and maintain the data management plan, but also the related data itself, so the, the, the management plan with the data from a single point uh, that also enable the linking of these resources, um, not only like um, the data itself, but as well other resources that might be relevant for the data management plan, like you know the software that was used to analyze or produce the data or the publications that were derived from this data. Uh, also to enable the fairness of uh, assessment of the data management and related resources, particularly the data sets, uh, and making sure, of course, that everything is discoverable in EOSC, particularly in the, in the research or research graph or scientific knowledge graph that you call uh, so that that was basically what we wanted to to achieve, and and then that's where it comes the the Arrow Hub uh, platform into play. So Arrow Hub um, started as a you know prototype uh, um, solutions since um, uh, 2010 more or less. So that was like a like a proof of concept uh, as a, a holistic solution for the management of research objects. I will go into details. What are, what is research objects, so you will understand better. But uh, the ROHA platform started um, to evolve into, you know, from the proof of concept into some kind of testing in the 
2014, 2019, which was the first real testing in some research communities, and now into a production product, which is now from 2020 and is now integrated as well in the EOS. So basically, AROHA provides the storage, lifecycle management, and preservation of scientific outcomes. Uh, it enables to share and make these resources available to others, publish and, and release resources through DOIs, and allows also the discovery and reuse of pre-existing pre scientific knowledge, basically. Uh, so ROHAB itself is a re reference platform because it implements natively the ARO crate model and paradigm. Um, and of course, it supports different stakeholders, but our primary focus is always on scientists, researchers, students, and any kind of enthusiastic in science. Um, and it's considered or used as a backbone to a wealth of ARO-centric applications and interfaces across different scientific communities. Uh, so in order to understand better, of course, this uh, the, 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 the platform and, and the whole concept of this, we need to go a little bit in details of what are the research objects. So again, this, this um, definition of the research store, uh, objects started like around 2009, uh, uh, and then it was um, uh, evolving during the latest year into what is called now the arrow crate. But the goal, the main goal of the research object was to account, describe, and share everything about your research, including how things are related to each other. So you can see this as a, as a box, uh, of course, where you put everything that is connected to, to your research. Um, so let, let's go to see how this works in practice. So, Basically, uh, the research outcomes and related resources um, are normally, uh, you know, spread across different repositories. They have, of course, their own metadata, but are normally in different places. Like, you know, workflows are in uh, repositories like workflow hubs. Software are normally in GitHubs. Models are in some other specialized repositories, presentations, in SlideShare articles and pub, PubMate or you know, um, any other kind of publisher, data, for example, in Zenodo and many other uh, organizational repositories. So that's more or less the, the situations, but in order to make the research fair, of course, we need access to all of these resources. And this is where the research objects comes into play. So it's like giving an integrated view over all of these fragmented resources using PIDs and metadata that is uh, human and machine readable. So you can basically uh, see all of these connections in the box itself as a contextualized graph, because at the end, the research object is like, a, it's, it's a graph. It's, a, it's, it's just connecting the different resources uh, and putting uh, accessible from a single point uh, and based on identifier, permanent identifier. So the research object has its own metadata as well, of course, but can be managed and evolved in its own right. So it can be packaged, it can be deposited, transfer, access, and reproduce if appropriate. So that's that's more or less the high level view. Now, if we go a little bit more into inside what is um, a research object, so this is how it looks like, uh, particularly in the new uh, you know uh, paradigm uh, based on the arrow crate. So you have like arrow metadata file, basically, which is uh, this having this metadata, structured metadata about the research object itself and the content. I mean, all of these resources that are there, like the files, directory, links to resources. So this is really important because as I said, the resources can be uh, just pointing to the location where, where they are physically uh, placed, like you know this repository that I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, of course, you can also put uh, you know, resources physically inside the research object, but mm, the, let's say like the, the most common um, usage is connect resources that are spread around different locations. Uh, and if we uh, do, uh, see like how this is in the implementation point of view, of course, at the end, we have the um, these ideas. So for example, for all these contextualized entities like authors, organizations, uh, yeah. or projects, fundings, and that kind of thing, we are using identifiers. So like ORCID IDs or ROARS IDs. Um, and then for the individual uh, files and resources, we have, of course, a, 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 you know, a set of metadata that is describing each of them, of, of course, but they are also having their own identifier. They can be even DOIs 
of course, because this, for example, is a is an article or is, or is a data set that has its own DOI, or it can be just pointing to the locations in, I don't know, in GitHub or in Zenodo or some other place. So this is how it looks like. And as you see at the top, this is like a high level uh, permanent identifier of the research object itself. So as you see, this is based on the linked data approach, of course, uh, and based on some basic and uh, simple principles of how to package this information and make it accessible uh, as a both human, but also machine readable uh, way. Uh, so in, in summary, the arrow create is uh, providing like a practical lightweight approach to packaging the, the research object data entities, uh, you know, uh, with, with the metadata. Uh, this uh, uh, aggregates files and any content that is accessible and addressable via URI with contextual information to aid decisions about reuse. I mean, like who, what, when, where, how, all of these questions of, of the resources that are connected to this research uh, are what we want to you know, um, address in the metadata of the, of the resources inside the research object. They are web native, of course, they are machine readable, human readable, uh, search engine friendly. They are familiar with all this, uh, you know, it's nothing like completely new. So it's, uh, we are based on existing works. And this is extensible and incremental. So you can always add additional metadata, which is uh, particular to your, uh, to your research community. And this is done like using uh, profilings. So you can do some profiling of the arrow crate for some particular community or for some particular kind of uh, application. And there is this, this is an open community effort. So there is a lot of people behind this. Uh, of course, we were in from, from the very beginning, as I said, in 2009, more or less, but there is a lot of people behind this now. So, so based on that, I, I go a, a little bit on, on the functionalities of the ROHA uh, for you to understand the, the management of the research objects. So basically ROHA enables you to manage high quality research objects that can be interpreted and reproduced in the future. Uh, so that means that you are able to assess uh, via ROHA the quality of the research object based on different dimensions or criteria. Uh, so for example, one of these is uh, something that we call the checklists, uh, which allows you to, to say, for example, how complete a research object is based uh, with respect to the requirements in a particular community. But now we also have fairness services connected to that. I will show you in a second a bit on that. Uh, so you can you know, reference, share, uh, and preserve uh, your studies, campaigns, observations, uh, all of these resources connected, including, like I said, internal or external ones. And you can also point to other research objects. So you can have nested research objects. Uh, you can collaborate via Arrow Hub with other colleagues. Right, so you you can have like uh, uh, permissions to say who can modify a research object, who can uh, edit in this research object, and who is um, if the research object is, for example, private. Right, so that kind of things. Uh, you can manage the evolution, so this is very important. Uh, so similar to you know source code uh, paradigms, um, basically you are able to produce some releases at certain points in time, which we call snapshots. Uh, and also you can make some fork from a research object in order to facilitate the reuse, you know, and acknowledgement of, of this work that has been reused. Uh, you can, over, of course, publish with DOIs, so uh, allowing the citation. Uh, you can also monitor and follow the research object, so you get notifications, for example, if something has changed in the research object, the quality has changed, and you can build also a reputation because there is a possibility to do some rating, uh, favorating uh, some research objects, and of course, find research that is related to other people in uh, in, in a similar domain. Uh, so these are some of the added value services here. Uh, so the semantic enrichment. So we have connected services uh, that enables the extraction of uh, metadata from scientific text, scientific content. Uh, and this metadata is then, of course, uh, represented uh, as also machine readable metadata uh, that can be used for searching uh, and discover research objects. This metadata is also used for the recommendation, as you see here. This is something that we call the collaboration spheres. Uh, then you have all of this social impact information, uh, the life cycle that I mentioned before, which allows you to publish also in other EOS services. I will sh uh, uh, show in a second. And the fair assessment, the quality assessment that I mentioned, 
and the integration with the EOSC itself, of course, a uh, ROHAP is connected to, to, to EOSC AAI via the EGI check-in service. Uh, so how is the connection with EOSC in general? So this is how it looks like. Uh, so um, here, of course, all the services that you see are somehow connected or onboarded in, in, in EOSC. So you have like data cubes from um, uh, Adam platform. Uh, you have the text mining services. These are two coming from Reliance, but also you have, you know, EGI notebooks, EGI binder, Zenodo, B2Share, B2Drop, of course, Argos, which we will go now in details. Then you have the uh, research graph of OpenAir and EGI check-in. Uh, yeah, so this is high level overview of the architecture. I don't need to, to go into details here, just to say that this is uh, based on, on Django and, uh, and, and React. Uh, of course, the, this is like two modules. There is like the backend and of course the front end of portal is, is, is in a different uh, location or different components. And sorry, I have something calling me, I don't know. Um, okay, so going into details with the integration of Roja and, and Argos, uh, I am coming here. Just give, give me one second because I think that someone is calling. I am, as I said, in a hotel. Wait, wait a second. Yes, no, no, no worries. I will. Sorry. No problem, you can continue. Yeah, okay. So now let's go into more details of the integration with Argos. Um, so what we are having now, so basically, we are the, having the possibility to, of course, you know, Argos can export DMPs in different formats, including X, XML and JSON. So these are uh, some of the potential export formats for, for data management plans. Um, and then Rohab now can import those DMPs, particularly based on the XML version, but also the JSON version can be imported. I will <laughs> go into details why it's like this. Uh, and then this import generates a research object in Roja, as you can see here. So this is like a data management plan that we have in Argos. And based on this import process, we have generated a, a, a research object, um, on, which includes all of this uh, information about the data management plan. So let me show you now a bit more on this. So the imported research object includes on the one hand, all the information from the DMP in the form of human readable as, as a subset, because you saw that there is the description, the funding, you know, the, the, the grants, all of this information, uh, the, the people involved, all of this is of course also machine readable uh, right away, uh, sorry, human readable, but everything, uh, the whole information is, um, uh, you know, uh, aggregated in the research shop also in machine readable format. Reusing standard vocabularies here. So in particularly, uh, as we will see, there are some uh, existing uh, ontologies that are uh, in vocabulary that are um, particularly for, for DMPs, uh, but you know, for more general terms, we are reusing other, term, uh, other vocabularies that are well known uh, and reused in many different contexts. But apart from, from all of this metadata, uh, uh, you have, the data sets themselves. So um, the data sets can be physically uh, in the research object or, or of course by reference. So the, the data is just pointing to a location where it is uh, placed now, for example, a repository in, uh, in the organization or uh, placed in Zenodo, whatever. You can also put this in the research object. So that, that's what the research object will have, not that only the data management plan with all of this metadata, but also the data sets themselves. Right. Of course, if the data set is not existing at the moment of the creation or of this import, uh, the research object is just adding like a placeholder, is a folder, where later on you will be able to upload the data set uh, or, or a link to the data set when it will be become available later on. So that's that's how it uh, is generating the the, the research object. Uh, Additionally, when new versions of the DMP are created, they can be also propagated in the research object. So a new version of the DMP will create a new version of the research object as well. So basically uh, what we are doing is 
before uh, importing the new version, we create a snapshot. Uh, I mean, this is automatically, of course, this is done by, by the import process or, or the you know update pro process. A snapshot of the research job is generated before the importing the new version. And then all the new information coming from the new version replaces the existing metadata in the research object. So you will have then as well, uh, access uh, to this kind of life cycle of, of the inversioning of the of the DMP via the research object. So a bit more on the workflow and implementation details on that. So first of all, how this works. The first thing that you, we need to do, of course, is about templates because uh, uh, Argos, of course, um, uh, is based on the use of templates, right? So you have the template, for example, for Horizon Europe, for Kistera program. So the DMPs are uh, based on uh, templates, which the templates reflect the requirements of a particular program or funder, right? So that's more or less how it works. So Arrowhub, what it's doing is, first you need to process the Argos template, which is in XML, and then Rohab extracts uh, and returns the questions with the idea of the answers in JSON form, like, like, like here. Uh, of course, this is empty uh, because uh, um, we don't know how this will be mapped into the particular terms that I, will, uh, I was mentioning before. So then is the, the role of a domain expert here to map the answers to predicates using those existing vocabularies, like I said, like the DMP ontology, Dublin quorum terms, or, or schema.org, uh, ideally. Of course, if no predicate is found in those vocabularies, then a, a new predicate is generated or created. That's not a problem. but but we try to be uh, compliant and reusing you know, terms from, from uh, those existing vocabularies. So then this field mapping in JSON is important in ROHA. Of course, this is something that is done once and these are only admin operations, right? So this is not something that we expect the users to do or something like this. This is, some, this is done by uh, administrators and, and in, in help with the domain experts. So once this is done, right, uh, we, we can now support the DMPs based on these templates. So uh, this is when you can import uh, the DMP itself that is generated from Argos and the operation expects the DMP in XML, that, that's the main source for the import. Uh, but optionally, you can provide uh, the, UM, the URL of the DMP so that we can also generate like a re reference from the research object to the DMP in Argos, right? So that's some, something optional that you can add here. And also you can provide the JSON uh, of the DMP. Why? This is because we found out that uh, there is some information, some, some metadata that is not present in the XML and is present in the JSON. However, the XML is still more complete than the JSON. <laughs> so, so there is a bit of uh, work that we had to you know, uh, discuss with, with Argos on this, but it's more or less the situation, right? So, uh, so if you import both, then you have almost everything that is uh, uh, in, in Argos. Um, then uh, you, know, you are able to, to retrieve folders that correspond to, to, um, to the data sets, right? For a given row, and you can also, uh, uh, get from Rohab uh, or you know the machine readable metadata of a particular folder that means the the DMP data set right that's more or less then the, this is how the upgrade works uh, you of course first um, uh, go to the uh, Rohab and tell I want to up upgrade the DMP so I have a new version of the DMP and of course you can import it but there we have of course some scenarios to consider. For example, the new version has a new data set or uh, the existing data set is updated or the existing data set is deleted. So, you know, the first two are more straightforward how to uh, manage, but for the last case, there is a constraint that the data set uh, should be removed from the uh, research object before uh, we can uh, upload it or of course, if it's empty, it's not a problem. It's automatically, uh, you know, just discarded. But the, the one thing that we didn't want is just to, uh, you know, lose existing data that is already there in, in the research object. So the user has to be aware that if he removes something, there is already 
uh, some existing data sets connected to the research object. So he needs either to delete that from the research object or uh, make sure that the new version also includes this data set. So this, if the conditions are met, like I said, the, there is a, a snapshot is generated and then the annotations of the research object are replaced. That's, that's how it works. Uh, so now, what are we working on now? And what is the future work? I mean, what, what are the, the things that we have? There are many, many uh, still open uh, tasks, open uh, things that we want to, to do with this integration. First of all is uh, propagate changes in Roja back to Argos. So, you know, going the reverse way. That's something that we, um, we, we haven't done uh, yet. Uh, then, of course, export existing research objects to Argos. So, you know, you have al already many research objects in Rohab. Can we generate or at least, you know, prefill the Argos DMPs with information from, from Rohab? So that's, uh, we have already done like an initial test on that. We, we are able to do some, some export. So we can export the research object to XML and then import this XML in Argos. So this is, uh, you know, what we are working on now, like testing. There's a lot of things to be done on this uh, on this side, but um, it will be something very interesting as well. Of course, we need to define templates in Argos aligned with the DMP requirements, especially in, in our case at the national level. So in Poland, so we have many um, requirements, especially from the uh, national funding agency called NCN. We have like a first version on that as well but uh, it needs to be validated, discussed and adapted, uh, adjusted uh, with the uh, you know, validation of, of, of this agency. Uh, we want also to extend Argos GUI to enable direct export to Rohab. So instead of doing this manual export and then import, you know, it will be very great if you have here in the Argos, just export to Rohab. <laughs> and this will be done uh, you know, automatically uh, by the user on all of this process. So that that's really something that we want to do uh, as priority because it will be really nice thing to have. And the same thing will be to Rohab GUI to enable the export to Argos, the same thing, right? So that's the, the situation. Then another thing that we are having as a, you know, things to do is provide some automatic suggestions for the mappings. Uh, that uh, I showed you before. So this JSON that is uh, generated with the questions and the, the answers, the idea is that we can provide automatically some suggestions based on the some kind of NLP, right? So that would be really great as well. <laughs> it is something that we have some ideas uh, and we would like to do, but you know, it's, it's there of course in, into the future. Uh, we also need to integrate national repositories on Rohab. Uh, to allow uh, search and connect existing data sets to the DMP or to add the new data sets in, uh, from the DMP into this repository. So that's also something that we want to do. Of course, we need to do a lot of improvement, testing, evaluation at the national level, um, you know, alignments with, with uh, the funding agency uh, systems as well, because there are some systems in the uh, national uh, funding uh, agencies that we would try as well somehow to produce uh, the DMPs or export the DMPs information in alignment with whatever this national system can import if it's possible, or at least that it can be easy, you know, transfer into this system because, um, you know, to avoid duplicate effort from the, from the researcher. Uh, of course, if there is any possibility to use Argos API is something that also we, uh, we are you know open to to discuss as well, um, and yeah, some clarifications issues found and why we are using these two files that I uh, said at the beginning. So uh, we realized some things like you know in XML, um, you know you you have funder grant projects ID normally use our internals IDs, while in the JSON file you get uh, information that are pointing to, you know, uh, Senodo IDs, which are discoverable. So this is something that we need to figure out. Uh, some also data sets descriptions are missing in the XML. Contact data is missing, but it's in the JSON file. Um, you know, there is a problem with the profiles ID because they don't, 
this is not the same for for each user so we cannot rely on the ids um you know some additional data is missing like uh um for example some some fields there which is not in the xml counterpart so you know there is some things that we have to, uh, found uh, that we have tried to solve at least partially but uh, we still of course have a lot of discussion and in, in inter interactions we need to have a lot of interactions with argos team to overcome and, and solve all of all of those uh, issues uh so this is like just a list of resources that you can use regarding Rohab, like um, uh, you know where to find it, documentation, tutorials, at, uh, help desk, and and so on. So and that's all from from my side. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Raúl. That was a great overview of of everything of the research objects uh, context uh, the concept. Sorry the ROHAB and the integration. And I can uh, assure you that uh, we are already working on the API uh, to, to facilitate you know, better integration. Uh, yeah. So thank you for uh, sharing that uh, also with, with us. Uh, I see some uh, questions uh, that have been in the chat. So one is by Paulette. Uh, why importing data sets themselves in Rohab? References should be sufficient. So why importing? As I said, you, you can have reference. So that's the idea. So that you have the, you have the possibility to uh, add reference. The, the research object is, a, is a, an aggregator of references basically you can have of course the the, the data set itself but uh, the main idea is to have the reference to the data sets that's the main idea thank you and then anita uh, asks are there any work being done on further developing the rda common standard to fit the occurring needs of scientists their institutions repositories funders etc uh, so I'm not directly there no, to be no. honest, so I cannot. But I can, that. I can, I yeah. can inform because I'm co-chairing this group, um, the, the interest group for active data management plans in RDA, and uh, there are not ongoing activities around this, but uh, we are um, considering how uh, an expansion uh, of the current um, common standard could. Um, could look like at least in the future so we are exploring this idea and how it could look like so i understand that this rda common standard is also the one that produced this um and dmp ontology right that's, that's... The, yes yes the one that i shared with you yes exactly exactly huh? uh then diego uh, murgavi asks uh, thank you, Raul. Can we possibly have your presentation? Yes. So we are going to share yeah. uh, everything is going to be linked on our Argos community goal page. And let me add that here as well again. So after the presentation, you can find everything here. Yeah, so and uh, again, Paulinette said, yeah, that's why did, she doesn't see why to import that. As I said, we don't import the data. We just like at the references where the data is, right? And um, and the idea here, of course, is um, of not only that you will have then uh, all of this information in the same place um, uh, with you know all of the metadata. You can also connect other resources that are related uh, there in the DMP as well in in the uh, in the research object. And of course, I didn't go into details. What else you could do once you have everything connected there? But for example, if you have I don't know software uh, notebooks or whatever in the in the research shop that you could directly, for example, open these in EGI notebooks and start working and and on you know with the data that you have been produced right uh, in in your DMP. So you know once you have everything in the research shop, there are many other things that you can that you could do right. So that's that's the main idea. And of course, as I said, we have also this. Uh, uh, you know, services for assessing uh, fairness, for example, that is already connected to to the ROHAB that is like, um, you know, 
um, just giving the 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 you know research object uh, fairness, but also the fairness of the individual resources and that kind of that kind of things. Yeah. <clears throat> I think you're in agreement. Uh, so, so you're talking uh, about yeah, the same I, thing. I hope as, that it's right. As Paulette yeah. mentioned. Um, and any other questions? Or can I, I have one question, maybe I can give you a bit more time to type or even unmute. Please feel free to unmute and have a discussion with us. Um, uh, my question is, you mentioned uh, that you're having a national instance in Poland. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, so can you, can you uh, share a few things about that and if uh, Rohab is used for other, in other countries or in other institutions? Yeah, so, I mean, we have, um, you know, as part of all of these activities at the national level, uh, we uh, deployed uh, Nargos uh, uh, to be used uh, in in Poland, um, yeah, you know, we we were actually making all of this uh, translation to the Polish language, so now it's everything also readable for for the guys in uh, for the researchers, sorry, here in in Poland, um, and uh, yeah, so this is um, of course connected because the, the instance of Argos is is not a, a now. Um, I mean, the Argos itself is not connected uh, directly to Roja uh, because now it's done via the export import. When when I said yeah. I want we want to update, um, I mean, improve Argos interface uh, GUI, uh, you know, of course we would we would need to do that at the national level. Hopefully, this can also be an option in the you know general instance of Argos at some point. But uh, yeah, the idea is that we we would have this connection directly to, to Rohab. And, and Rohab, again, is also um, having like a main instance because this is like the general instance. We didn't have the need to, to have different instances of Rohab at the moment. Uh, so we are having the possibility to for researchers also to put their um, data there at the Polish level. So everything is translated into Polish language as, as well, of course, right? So that's the two main language of Rohab. Now is English and Polish, yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, maybe I can contribute to have Greek also, or someone else can can contribute to. Yeah, yeah, of course. So that yeah. we have Rohab in, in other languages. Um, it's very similar to to how how the translation for Argos, you know. So there is some kind of mm. you know, the, the main uh, uh, configuration files for with all that. Okay, so you have everything, and then you just translate it yeah, from yeah. English. Okay, okay, that's good to know. Um, thank you. Are there any questions? Please feel free to unmute. <clears throat> no. Okay, then uh, if there are no other questions, can, can you, uh, where can we find you, Raul, if we if you would like to explore this uh, idea of localization or of using Roja you know, mm -hmm. in general. Yeah, 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 sure. I mean, we will be very uh, happy on that. Um, I mean, the first thing maybe that would be really um, uh, nice to, to see is also your, you know, uh, input, feedback, input. Uh, feedback on how the research object was uh, generated from the MPC in Argos. You know? so, I would invite you uh, when this is like more a bit more tested, maybe like you know uh, in a some days or something that uh, the latest changes are released. I, I was just saying that we are working on now. These are going to be released uh, soon. Then it would be good to have your your feedback because you know you are working on the DMP so basically all the time, so you know very well um, how this uh, uh, you know how it looks then from the research object perspective and then, uh, you know, any kind of um, opinions or recommendations, it will be, it will be really useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this open call for, for uh, people to, to provide their input. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for all the nice comments as well in the chat. And uh, yes, it was very informative. Thank you so much, Raul. Um, for being here and joining our community call.
uh, we'll uh, make sure to add your links also. Oh, you have the, you have them in the presentation, so uh, everyone can reach out to you. And uh, we'll uh, come back. Yes, we'll, we'll continue, of course, our, our collaboration and discussion offline. Um, thank you very much, everyone, also for joining. Uh, hope that was uh, interesting. It was something different this time. <laughs> hope that it was interesting to you as well. Uh, and talk to you next uh, month. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.